can't say like subconscious. Hey, who's John Snyder? Oh. Hey. How y'all doing? Good. I'm fine. I'm not even used to this app, but I thought I would drop in. I thought mm. I would listen in, but <laughs> we, we can interact. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my, my Discord, Discord you know, audio is like fucked. Sorry for this. I have something to say, you know, like... I have something you. to say, you know, like... I, I'm a fucking liar, man. I, I said I said in the in the in the other the other meeting you remember that I wasn't a gaming a, a gamer oh, uh -huh. anymore that I quit it like at 12. Let's see where we are. Oh, games! You play any games, man? We're on games already. That's great. You play any games? <laughs> <laughs> Me? No, I'm not a gamer. You're not <laughs> a gamer. Oh. Uh, well, when I was I, I was remembered yesterday about. Free last safari. It was a Nintendo game I used to play. Yeah, what was it called? A three last safari. Okay. It was like a monkey who who's who was a skateboard oh, okay. uh, and <laughs> something like that. But yeah, no, I'm not. You know, like not a, like a real game gamer. But you know, old <laughs> like, school games. Like I don't really game that much like nowadays but I, when, when i was younger i used to play old school games yeah oh yeah yeah old oh, nintendo yeah. i i finished my game uh, phase uh, like a 12. after that you know I, i i started to think about it and i forgot my whole like uh, like winning winning 11 and fifa face <laughs> oh yeah 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 and it, it was like crazy you know like every day yeah so that was a lie that was a lie yeah definitely that's funny <laughs> <laughs> well, because yeah and i don't play that many games either and i remember one time we were talking i was talking to minds gaming about like you know gaming or whatever And then I was like, you know, I remember this one time I played like when I got Mario 64 like so much that like I dreamt that I was like not only in Mario 64, but that I was Mario and that like someone else was like controlling me. <laughs> and then they like kept on like jumping and I was hitting the wall. And I was like, dude, dude. And then I remember waking up. I was like, probably like five years old. I was thinking, fuck, I gotta stop playing that video game. <laughs> I'm playing that video game way too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I haven't been playing since uh, 16, I guess, really. And last game was like online game. But what was your question? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, how just, is to like, how is to grow up in Turkey? Oh, depends. I think I was uh, I was a bit lucky on that side. Ah, but that depends also the time. 90s, it was cool. We were playing on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Thank and you. There was not much cars on the street. Yeah, doing everything like going to the uh, climbing to trees, fruit trees. Mm -hmm. I think I I climbed like thousand trees in my life, mm -hmm. or like <laughs> had, had right. some like band of cyclists like. Or made some house three three houses. Spent a lot of time in the village. That was cool. Like all my mothers and fathers side living in the countryside. Like when we visit them relatives. Spending time in nature can say some history is really common. I mean, not it's not like only some really specific parts words to that but like all seaside of the country almost historically like inside too but mm -hmm. there are things to do mm -hmm. there are lots of games like children's games in turkey mm -hmm. like we inherit lots of games mm -hmm. and we were playing we learned sharing man really got used to like called by our parents like hey it's late come home you know or they bring in some food from balcony and then 
hey, how, how many you are? And we are five. Okay, like put some salsa or some cheese on them and then eat that. That's what I remember from child. But now it's it's not that good. Like no. it's the time also. I think the kids are not going out. Their access to often. knowledge is like so much higher right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Kids and everything. Mm -hmm. But the practice, like how they are able to. Yeah, in, in here, I see kids like a lot. They're biking and really like uh, reminds me of my age five, six. Um, mm -hmm. They're like very fast, like going, you know, making some. But I wonder like how better that would be if there was not like cars when it comes. I mean, I think that's an experience that they will not be uh, having that. The yeah, other day yeah. I was thinking like, hey, how uh, there, there is a base uh, stress level, for example. I mean, when you go to the street, you can't just uh, walk. You know, there is something that can hit you. You always got that program here, like... Even you are claiming that you're like so chill and relaxed person, you always have some security thing on you, so a car don't hit you. You know, you gotta be careful, like unless mm -hmm. you're in nature or something. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're in a nature, we are living like as if there are like elephants and rhinos all around. I'm not saying like, of course, there's the city, but Population is going to the city only, like 70%, 60%. Then we got that base level thing, like... Then it's uh, when you give that capacity to people, like... <laughs> hey, they don't fear about it, they forget about it. It's like, they have to be careful always, like... Why the fuck I have to be ca careful always? Why I'm not... The First, like, how how do we say that? Like, first citizen? No. But that, that, the, the, more, the, valuable, more valuable. The, the thing is this. It, it, well, I know it, it changed, but I think it's like a program, you know, like it's running. Like all the, the fear and dangers, you know, there's danger everywhere and there's yeah. fear and the 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 the, the, the The parents now it's like no don't go no, out there, there is danger but no fear that's the thing man people mm -hmm. like put in that danger but got used to so well and they adapt or like whatever you know mentally but that doesn't change like your life could be much more higher in quality but mm -hmm. we don't give that base level to the people or newborn didn't born into that imagine that i mean i i lived those years we didn't have that we would see a car coming from like distance we were playing soccer and put some rocks on the um street yeah. and then when the car approaches we were removing having that time to the rocks you know so the mm -hmm. car could get, come true <laughs> cool i mean i think I think that should be uh, the right for children to put some, you know, like design the streets if they wanted to play uh, something. I mean, I was thinking about like really um, the other day, there was this turtle, you know, it's going to end in 10 minutes, by the way. The turtles, you know, like they go and then they cannot go across. I was thinking, hey, uh, if there's a turtle, it's uh, it's road is pretty much, you know, where it can't go or will go. Anyways, man, I'm gonna tell about it later. But yeah, I want to hear from you, John. What you do? Oh, uh, I'm into it. You can go on about the turtle if you want. I've I was thinking about the turtles some recently, and I've. I'm having trouble remembering in what context. Oh shit. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Social reality is 
human niche creation. That is a quote from that neuroscientist in a video I kept sharing at people recently. In short, the wiring of your cerebral cortex makes compression possible. Compression enables sensory integration. Sensory integration enables abstraction. Abstraction permits your highly complex brain to issue flexible predictions based on, on the functions of things rather than on their physical form. And that is creativity. And you can share these predictions by way of communication, cooperation, and copying. And that is how the five C's empower a human brain to create and share social reality. In humans, however, the five C's intertwine and reinforce one another, which lets us take things to a whole other level. Songbirds learn songs from their adult tutors. Humans not only learn how to sing, but also the social reality of, of singing, such as which songs are appropriate on which holidays. Meerkats teach their offspring to kill by bringing them half dead prey to practice on. We learn not only about killing, but also about the difference between accidental killing and murder. And we invent different legal penalties for each. Rats teach one another what's safe to eat by marking palatable foods with an odor. We not only learn what to eat, but also which foods are main courses versus desserts in our culture and which utensils to use. Other animals such as dogs, great apes, and certain birds also have brains that compress signals to a degree. So they can understand things abstractly to some extent. But as far as we know, Humans are the only animals whose brains have enough capacity for compression and abstraction to create social reality. A single dog might develop its own social rules, like that of a particular, like that a particular grassy area is playing for is for playing with humans, or that pooping is not allowed inside the house. But a dog brain cannot communicate these concepts to other dog brains efficiently, the way that human brains can convey concepts with words to make social reality. Chimps can observe and copy one another's practices like poking a stick into termite holes to pull out tasty snacks. But this learning is based in physical reality, namely that the stick fits into the termite holes. This is not social reality. If a troop of chimps agreed that whosoever pulls a particular stick out of the ground becomes king of the jungle, that would be social reality because it imposes a sovereign function on the stick that goes beyond the physical. Most animals have evolutionary adaptations that make them specialists in their niche, that their environment that they live in. Like an antlers, like the, uh, an antlers of an elk or an anteater's tongue but humans became generalists. Evolution blended the five C's into a potion that spurs us to bend the world to our will, or at least try to. All animal brains pay attention to things in their physical environment that are relevant to their well-being and survival, and then they ignore the other stuff. But humans don't just select stuff from the physical world to create our niche, we add to the world by collectively imposing new functions on things that didn't evolve to have, or they didn't, aren't designed to have those functions. And then we live by them. Social reality is human niche construction. And it expresses so much. The, the whole um, sociobiological function of us being able to speak, really, because I think that kind of epitomizes it. Like the point of that is for us to carve out these little niches in the world as we know it, so that, I mean, to put it crudely in quantitative terms, so that our nervous system can reduce the amount of chaos or what's sometimes called um, free energy. Um, I think uh, doxology's into that a bit. 
so predictability mm -hmm. cognitive ease but it, it kind of entraps you as well um you were talking about childhood i was thinking of that some like here in america in kentucky the midwest uh my parents are low middle class i guess and i've, I've never lived in big cities um i've sort of got used to it now but i grew up in a town of uh 5, people maybe and i say grew up just because that's the closest thing i have to say like my family kind of migrated the car culture we we can all migrate now but in some ways i can definitely say i was privileged and i think i was aware of that because when i was real little i think i'd like mix this in from going to protestant church and everything but i had this like uh inference going in my mind somehow that everything was so perfect that it, it could not things could not be any other way for this great symphony of life as i knew it and it's it's intoxicating really but you can also find ways to be aware that you're constructing that yeah. but it's also very seductive you know um kind of go in, into it, my own little story i remember one time uh, so you know just for context um i grew up in in la born and raised um so we, i was with my friend and we were kind of like babysitting his girlfriend's kid so we were in this uh, courthouse uh, an alhambra courthouse and so like for like other context is like uh, there was this sh uh, show called um uh, hood adjacent meaning like you know you're kind of like wow. on that border of kind of like being like ghetto but not really yet like you know people but you're, you're kind of still lower middle class like this is in the context of la so anyways i'm there at, at court with my my girl my friend's girlfriend uh and her dad had like some court thing so we were supposed to like babysit her her daughter and she's like two or three years old and so like we're in the courthouse there's all these cops going around and then um hilda goes to her kid before she leaves like you better behave because there's cops all around here and you don't want to get in trouble because these cops are here and then like there's like this other kind of like family there and then i, I go to my friend he's like you know what's like the difference between like that and then like broadly speaking like white people they say oh like if you're in trouble like go to the cops to, like to for you know for like safety and like this and that like there she's telling her daughter like at two years old like you don't want to you don't want to get the cops in here because like cops mean like problems trouble like you call the cops and like shit go shit hits the fan and like you know you lose your house and like you lose your dad mm -hmm. and you go into like the system like that's what the cops mm -hmm. mean cops don't mean like protecting you cops <laughs> mean like oh yeah. you're gonna get fucked <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and so like that's what like that means and i'm, I'm like that's that's I mean, but it is true like in like that context for her and like growing up like broadly speaking like in the hood <laughs> and like even for me like later on in my life like you know i remember even like weed now you know it's basically like legal you know you can't like smoke out in public but like even like i have it on me and i'm like like paranoid of the cops even though like it's perfectly fine for me to have it like in my pocket but i'm still like oh my god the fucking cops like i i still like i remember my friend growing up he had like a sixth sense for like cops like he like literally he was like the best guy like he would we would be in the car like blazing it and he would be like dude dude chill chill and like it, it would be like 20 minutes later we're like john how the fuck did you see that cop like you you like sensed it. like we didn't see that cop and he's like dude i just know i just know it's like he would just like all the time he just had like a knack for like sensing the cops and like it was just it's just kind of interesting and funny like the but also, so yeah. in the environment. And, and, you know, also, too, like, for, for, like, my childhood, too, like, even kind of um, idolizing or whatever, I think there's a line in it that I, I stole that I wrote in, in the, the, the Discord chat. We endure, we live in our myths and we endure our realities. That's from, like, Robert Anton Wilson. 
we construct like you know these stories about like our childhood or whatever i remember one time like there's like this funny story of like my 20s and like uh my friend we're like up north and i forgot we're like drunk or whatever and something happens and then my friend retells his story and i start laughing and she's she's she recounts the story like worse and like uh, I'm like, oh, that that didn't happen, <laughs> and I'm like, but that's kind of funny. So like, I'm not gonna like say anything. I was like, we'll just go with that story because it's like funnier. But there's this other book that I read. I don't. I'm always going back to this one book, The Rules of Attraction. But like in the book, it starts off with four different scenes, and it's like a college party, right? And there's four different narrators, and it's like each the first like the first four chapters are the same like party in the same scenes with the same timeline right but just like different perspectives and then like in the book if you like really pay attention there's like just subtle words that are changed in when the whatever narrator is telling the story so it could be like oh that was a good party or oh that's an awesome party oh my god like this and that and it kind of like reminded me of my, my group of friends that we had like when we were like uh, when I was in my twenties like running around party, and it was like my I called him the our hype guy because like everything was like oh everything's awesome this is the shit like oh my god the, this is gonna be the greatest night of our lives and all this kind of stuff like all the time. But like this like less than minutes, Satori. So, yeah. What should we do? Rejoin? Yeah, let's like rejoin, I guess.